Wolfson, and today we're in St. Paul, Minnesota at my favorite running store, Run and Fun, where we're gonna learn how to pick out your best running shoe. Let's get after it. Well, Carrie, I think it's really important for people to come into a specialty running store to get fitted for their shoes, just because, especially at this store, we're gonna actually watch the person walk. We're gonna do a simple gait analysis. Mm -hmm. That'll just help of this whole wall of shoes that we have here, it'll help determine what style would be best for that person. Really the best shoe that we carry is the one that's going to fit their foot nicest. And there's some big terms for that which people don't really know, yep, so yep. explain those. Yeah, pronation, yeah. supination, yep, all that. Yep, yep, and supination is basically if you start and step on the outside of your foot and mostly stay towards the outside. Okay. And so if you had, if you stepped in some water and walked on a concrete sidewalk, mm -hmm. the shape of your foot would be very curvy. Okay. If you have a flat foot, you're going to kind of step and roll inward. Yeah. Or do pronate is mm -hmm. what it's called, pronation. If you do that, then you want a little bit of support underneath your foot so you don't have excessive pronation, mm -hmm. which can lead to problems up the leg. So what's the difference between these? Okay, so we talked about, you know, the different types of feet mm -hmm. that people have, and so these are just three or four of the broad categories of shoes and like I was saying earlier there's a lot of gray area and so mm -hmm. there's shoes kind of along the whole spectrum of shoes of really really lightweight ones and flexible ones like these where yeah. you can basically take your finger and roll them in half wow. to ones like these where they're super stiff and they're not going to move at all. Okay. And so um, with these kind this is more of an orthotic shoe or like a uh, therapeutic shoe almost uh -huh. so people if they need a lot of support or motion control in their shoes if they are typically just a walker or someone who's coming back from a rehab or you know okay. a surgery or something like that and they need a lot of support or you know if they're just having some real big issues going on with their feet or mm -hmm. somewhere in their body a shoe like this is going to be good because it's going to keep your foot very stable okay and then it also you know it's looks kind of heavy but it's really not all that heavy yeah no and so oh, the, nice. the, the the technology has definitely improved yeah um, you know it's going to provide a lot of support a lot of cushion but it's not going to be you know, a brick on your foot. Right. This is kind of the most common style of shoe. It's just a standard stability shoe. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to have this posting on the inside that's a little bit more dense. And so I was talking about pronating or rolling inward. Yeah. This kind of helps prevent excessive rolling inward. And so okay. I'd say, you know, 70% of the people we see in here can fit into a shoe like this. And okay. especially if people are kind of in that gray area of, mm -hmm. you know, they're okay with a neutral shoe, which we'll get to, or this one. Yeah. Um, a lot of times we'll just pull them out both and most of the time people like a little, a little bit of support under their foot. And then this one's just a neutral cushion shoe. And so compared so to the other ones. There, really. Yep, 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 there exactly. There's no posting on the inside. And so this is for the person with the really high and rigid arch mm -hmm. and rigid foot. Mm -hmm. And so they just need a lot of cushion and a lot of softness on, uh, on their shoe when they land. Okay. Just because their foot isn't flexing at all to help absorb the shot. Sure. It's kind of a thing that's been coming back into the market lately, lately is a minimalist shoe or barefoot mm -hmm. shoe. And so you can basically take them and roll them in half with your finger. Um, and so there's not much to them. It's almost just like a protective sock is what I say. And so I think it can be a good tool for people to train in, but people have to know know their bodies. And if they do, if they do want to incorporate a shoe like this, like I said, it can be a good tool, but they have to do it very, very smartly because we're seeing a lot of people who are getting injured a yeah. lot by, by rushing into it too quickly. So all of these are training shoes, like you'd go and do your typical everyday runs in. Correct. I mean, there's Correct. other shoes here too that yep. people are racing in or doing their hard interval sessions in. Exactly. And, I mean, you guys have it all here. Exactly. There, there are things called racing flats, mm -hmm. and so those are, are almost like, like a combination of these but really, really lightweight. And okay. so there are ones with a little bit of support, which I know a lot of people like for the longer races. So yeah. for example, the marathon. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, for like 5Ks, you know, people like really, really lightweight shoes. Yep. And also, we do carry spikes for competition on the track and in cross country. And so we have almost every brand carries or makes those as well. And we do carry those. Okay. Well, very cool. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me at Run and Fun and get after it. Help spread the word about See Tally Run by sharing this episode on Facebook and Twitter or by rating and reviewing us in iTunes. It's an easy way to support the show, so get after it.